Battles can come in all shapes and sizes. Sometimes the battle can be against a human foe. Sometimes the enemy can be poverty and hopelessness. Well, Rob Wiles went to a pair of museums in Crossville that share different stories about two different battles. President Franklin Roosevelt set the tone. The only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Fear came to the Cumberland Plateau in the 1930s. Jobs were nearly impossible to find. Homes were lost. Hope was a flickering flame. Then in 1938, the Homestead Project was announced for more than 100 communities across the nation. One of them, Crossville, Tennessee. 252 families were given hope and a new beginning. A beginning remembered at the Homestead Pioneer Museum. Joyce Yeager is president of the group that maintains the museum. They got to choose from a, a 15 different floor plans, I believe. And once the, this was ended, most of them had already paid for it through the work or the others soon did. So it became theirs. Not a handout, but hope and hard work building their homes and some of the furnishings that went into them. Many of the families still live here and remember how important that second chance was. Well, my dad was one of the first 25 men chosen. Moved from Mayland, which is about 20 miles west of, of Crossville. But that seemed like an awfully long way to my mama to move away from her parents. <laughs> he uh, and my mother had been married long enough to have me and me be one year old. And um, it was an opportunity of a lifetime for them. The museum is marked by a unique water tower building, standing tall like the homesteaders who came here and built it along with their own homes. One of those homes is still maintained in pretty much close to original condition, small but looming large for those who worked so hard to build and earn it. It was very huge that they could be able to work and maintain their dignity because this area is very, very proud of their heritage and they could, you know, maintain their dignity. Once the houses began to be complete uh, and they were moving in, Eleanor Roosevelt came here. Electricity at that time was not accessible that took a few, a couple of three years later because TVA had not yet reached up here. But she insisted that there be running water in that house. This homestead project was one of President Franklin Roosevelt's ideas to help get the country out of the Great Depression. Now, other than the Great Depression, President Roosevelt had a few other things on his mind. One of them you may have heard of, World War II. That war and several other wars America has been involved in are remembered at another museum right down the road in downtown Crossville. We have artifacts starting with the Civil War going up to today's wars, and everything that you see in here is donated. Robert Boring is curator of the Military Memorial Museum, which has grown to have more than 4,000 items from the Civil War all the way up to current conflicts, weapons, uniforms, photos of course, but other pieces you might not know about. Back in the Civil War days, when a, uh, the uh, man of the house would leave home, uh, his woman or his wife would get a perfume bottle and collect her tears in it. And if he pa was killed in battle, she would pour her tears over his grave. And uh, if he survived, she would show him how she whipped for him while he was gone. And heroes from long ago remembered, like Milo Limert, a World War I hero, overshadowed by the more celebrated Tennessean, Sergeant Alvin York. Milo is from Crossville, and he uh, was, uh, received his uh, medal posthumously. Uh, he uh, wiped out four German machine gun nests with hand grenades before he was killed on him and his wife's first wedding anniversary, 27 days before Armistice Day. There's evidence here of Crossville's own unique history, chosen as the location of one of the first prisoner of war camps set up in World War II, it eventually housed more than 1,500 German officers 
who fit in very well with the locals. The population in Crossdale was 810. Mm -hmm. We had 1,550 prisoners here. If a local family needed an electrician, carpenter, plumber, handyman, someone to work on the farm, the prisoners would be sent out to town to do the work, and they got paid for it. Right. A lieutenant got $20 a month, a captain got 30 a major got 40 and a colonel got $50 a month. This is a very interesting uh, picture, a painting you have here. Yes, this is a man named Jurgen And that's him right there, huh? That's him. Yeah. He was a prisoner here in 1944. He uh -huh. was a Luftwaffe uh, parachutist. Okay. And uh, one day he got a piece of cardboard box and got permission to hand paint his barracks. And that's, oh, what, it, that's what he did. That German officer's son donated this painting along with his father's medals to the museum. And that's the way it goes around here. Most of the things that we have in here that people tell us that if we didn't want them, they were going to throw them in the trash. All the weapons that you see uh, are the same. We have Japanese rifles and pistols, Japanese hand grenades, German rifles and pistols and hand grenades, uh, and American uh, items. Uh, we have a, a Civil War cannon in the front, a 12-pound howitzer, that the owner said if we didn't want it, he was going to dump it in the river. So, uh, like I say, everything that you see in this museum is donated. Thank goodness the Military Memorial Museum is here to give a proper place to those all so important and interesting artifacts from battling human enemies. And the Cumberland Homestead Museum is just down the road here in Crossville to remind us of all the humans involved when the enemy was hopelessness. Mm -hmm.